battle at the border goes on, the Trump administration will stop detaining some migrant families illegally crossing the border. The move following a surge in immigration, causing overcrowding and safety concerns within the facilities. It comes as the Supreme Court sides with President Trump in his crackdown on illegal immigration, making it easier to detain immigrants with criminal records. Joining us now is Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano. Good morning, Judge, Maria. good to see you this morning. Welcome. Likewise. Your reaction to all of this. Well, uh, I'm sure the president is quite disappointed that he now has to engage in a catch and release, a, a program of the Obama administration, which he condemned as a candidate and has for the first two years of his presidency. This occurs when a family arrives at the border, uh, Maria, and makes a, an arguable and credible claim uh, for asylum. In the Obama administration, they gave you some papers that said, OK, you're coming back to a hearing, and only about 20 percent came back. In the Trump administration, they said, okay, you can go over there. The children can go in, in that holding facility. The parents can go in that holding facility. We'll knock on the door. We're ready for you. I'm exaggerating a little bit because the stays in these holding facilities could be eight or nine months before the trial came. The holding facilities are now so crowded that the Trump administration is reduced to doing what the president, as I indicated, condemned over and over again, the old Obama catch and release. We stopped you at the border. We assessed your claim. We believe it's viable. Now go into the United States, stay there, and we expect you to come back for your hearing. This just started this week, so we don't know how well or how poorly it'll work. Yeah, that's interesting because catch and release is one, one law that the president wants to change, right? I mean, that's the whole point. These people don't come back for the hearings, for the trial. Yes. And, and it is not a law, it's just a procedure followed by the Department of Homeland Security. So the Secretary of Homeland Security could change it, and the President could, and President uh, Trump did, and Secretary Nielsen did. But they now are confronted with no more space in the holding facilities. And the courts will not let them use a tent because that doesn't adequately provide for uh, shelter. So their alternative is to build new holding facilities, and the president would like to spend the money on other things, uh, or to catch and release. And they're going to try this catch and release. I think the president is doing this, holding his nose, but he's doing it. Wow, that is really fascinating how, how this is playing out. Meanwhile, Judge, there's this. The Defense Department reportedly finding a list of projects worth $12.8 billion dollars for which President Trump could divert funding in order to pay for his border wall. Well, he, I mean, they have found these. This, of course, is producing resistance on the part of conservative, pro-defense Republicans, some of whom uh, are, were responsible for designating these various projects. So here's how it, it happens. Here's how it went down. President Trump himself signed into law an appropriations bill that directed the Department of Defense to build X. They haven't gotten around to building X yet, but so they're going to take the money from the unbuilt X and dedicate it to the wall. So the members of Congress who want X built and who, who negotiated to get X into the legislation, even though they support the war or the wall, pardon me, are furious at the president for not building X and taking the money from X. Now take this and multiply it out 12 times, and you can understand what is about to be frustration and resistance to this on the part of Republicans in the Congress because they're not doing, the president's not doing what they believed he would do at the time they put these projects in the legislation that Congress passed and he signed, if you follow all of that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This wow. is what this How is what Google happens. Under the Microsoft? This is what happens yeah. when a president looks for unspent money and decides to spend it on an emergency matter or a matter he characterizes as emergent. Because they they won't they won't give him the money. He's right. looking under every rock, I guess. And, right. and there's a political calculation for that as well. There is. What's your take on this Google story? Uh, it says now it will ask Android users in Europe which browser and search engines they prefer, including Google rivals. This, oh. of course, comes as the company tries to amend that antitrust case uh, filed against it by European regulators. Is this going to be enough? Well, I hope it's going to be enough. I mean, Google has been accused by the EU of a tying arrangement. A tying arrangement is when you buy one product and they force you to buy another. I buy a new car, they're forcing me to buy their tires. I don't like their tires, but I have to pay for the tires they come with the car. So translate that into your, uh, into your iPhone. Google is very shrewdly, in my opinion, 
undermining the uh, the EU's antitrust case against it by changing the practices that the EU has said are violative of EU law. I think they are violative of EU law. Tying arrangements has been, have been unlawful in the United States for 75 or, or 80 years. A lot of people can get away with them. You want one egg? No. You have to buy a dozen or a half dozen eggs. Theoretically, that's a tying agent. Back to the iPhone, Google is saying, you, you, we, we sold you the software, but you can choose your browser. We hope you choose us, but you don't have to choose us, and it will work with the software. That could stop the EU prosecutors from pursuing Google, because Google's basically doing what the prosecutors want them to do. Mm. Well, we'll see if the kind of the, the kind of over you know regulation on tech in Europe plays out in America. I mean, there's sort of like all this conversation going on about that, so we'll follow that. What about the Mueller report? We're waiting for the Mueller report to drop. I understand it's coming out within the next two weeks, but former Obama White House counsel and Clinton-linked attorney Greg Craig could become the first Democrat to face prosecution in the Mueller investigation concerning allegations of illegal, unregistered overseas lobbying. What's this all about? Th Judge? This, is, this is not only a partner, a former partner at Skadden Arps, one of the great law firms in the country uh, and in the world. This is not only a Democrat. This is Bill Clinton's lawyer during the impeachment uh, process. Greg Craig is a very well-respected, internationally recognized attorney who, according to the federal government, was representing foreign companies in the United States and didn't register as an agent. Prior to the onset of Bob Mueller to our conscious, collective consciousness, this was, a, though a crime, it was remedied by a registration and a fine. Now the federal government indicts you for your failure to do that. If uh, Bob Mueller, one of his grand juries, indicts Greg Craig, he will be the first Democrat brought into the um, Mueller probe, and it does appear as though that indictment is imminent. Uh, Greg Craig has left uh, Skadden Arps. They already had one of their lawyers indicted and plead uh, guilty on a related Mueller case. Wow. All right, Judge, thank you. Good to see you this morning. Likewise. Judge Andrew Napolitano joining us there.